Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. And, um, yeah, it, it's been a long time since um, I've done a video, um, six weeks in fact. And, um, basically I want to say thank you to everybody who's, um, well, has been keeping in touch and um, messaging me and and uh, basically just showing some concern which is which is, is good um, a lot has happened in the modeling world as I do follow um, what's going on and, uh, and I'd just like to uh, wish uh, Chris Wheezy and Barry Davis um, well and I uh, hope to uh, see them back on the YouTube soon so, where are we at and what are we going to do? Well, we're here over at South Shields because um, I'm going to try and use some of the ideas um, and detailing that I've put into South Shields and hopefully incorporate them into Jarrah Road. For instance, this sidewall. I'm going to do something similar to this to Jarra Road um, on both sides. Um, obviously, using the smaller windows, but um, hopefully with the same effect. And this is where we left off from the last video. We just installed this little tiny bridge and uh, I've added a small fence across there with a gate and um, the farmer is still not happy he's sort of uh, I think he's broken down you know build him a bridge to get across and he breaks down on it <laughs> alright another little addition I have added to this field is a shepherd and his dog old Shep And I've added a couple extra trees. Now I had a question about trees and uh, the type that I use, so I'll uh, I'll just quickly mention that. And here are the trees that I uh, I use. They're HO gauge trees because if you type in double O gauge um, trees, they sell these as exact same trees, but they're too put two in a packet and they charge you four quid for them so I have found these on eBay for seven quid including postage for ten you get ten trees in there and they're 120 mil tall which is exactly like these ones here um, they, they are fairly basic but they do the job um, I do tend to spray them up and add more scatter on them to try and thicken them out but um, yeah they're, they're good enough for me and you can buy the the blossom ones as well quite cheap uh, here's the product code but I don't think you'll find the product code on eBay but uh, there you go there's the product code right so The walls are finished, the capping stones are finished. There's only one thing left for it now. And that's to start building the station. So here we are, we're back at the bench. And I did promise um, a couple of you guys that I would um, go over the drawings uh, before I make a start on building the station. Um, I've had a little bit of time to think about what I'm doing here and there's one thing that I know I don't like about this um, drawing um, is the two sloping roofs we have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do away with them 
and bring the building up to this level here. Um, so it'll bring two extra windows up either side and have this detail here at the front of the building here and here. But I still keep this so what it, in fact it'll just be a capped top with this um, granite fascia down the sides. This will be brick and that will be a granite um, or a stone fascia along there as well. So basically <laughs> having the time off is, is make me think about what I'm doing here. I think it's the right thing to do because it'll make the station look bigger than it is. Um, yeah, I think yeah, I think that's the right way to go. Um, but obviously, I still keep um, this section of the building, but these walls may either drop down or this apex may drop go up. But uh, we shall see about that as we come to build the actual building itself. So this is the the front elevation. Um, dimensions and everything will stay the same um, because of the space that I have got. So yeah, and the windows I'm using are the um, smart models windows for in here. So basically I've just drawn around them to get a height and I've only come up basically 12 mil from this edge here. So basically so that'll be there and we'll have a set of four windows basically like so, something like that. Which will give it a totally different appearance to the front. It will make it more, well, imposing I think. So that's for that. And yet again I'm using Smart Models doors. I've used these for South Shields. I've used them for many buildings. Um, Mrs. T Sweet Shop's got them and so has the Waybridge as well. So that will go in there. So that fits that a treat. Um, Smart Models has a gyro station um, for those of you uh, are interested uh, in kit form. Um, so I know I had a comment saying that smart smart models already build um, or make a station. Uh, why don't you use that? But um, I think I like to build uh, my own version. Anyway, this is not Jarrow. This is Jarrow Road. But yeah. So that's the front elevation. Here we have. A side elevation. Now, obviously, uh, this is going to come up now, and this um, stone will be on the corner here, and this will be one continuous wall. Um, do you remember earlier I said it's South Shields? I want to copy the brickwork from there over to here so this is what I'm going to do here so on one side of the station the town side will have windows and loading bay doors the, the other side that's up against the um, Stevenson's bank won't have any windows or doors so that is the side elevation and there are the sizes carried over from the front. Similar again, the dimensions will stay the same due to the 
platform that's, that are already there and the space. Here we have uh, the platform side, um, which won't be changed at all. I'm not going to add any extra windows here or here, so that will stay the same. The reason being there'll be a canopy running across the centre there. So this will stay the same, won't change. And there's the canopy there and the end of the buttress wall there. So that's the drawings. Inspirational photograph. Um, it just shows the canopy pillars as it were cast iron so I'll be doing something like that along the platform edge first thing we're going to do is the doors and uh, these are the doors I'm using LC22's and we always start with doors and windows so I've made a list um, need 11 doors I need 20 of these windows. Uh, if you go onto Smart Models um, website, you'll find that these are the larger double or scale uh, windows. Um, hopefully by the end of the video I'll have the name for them. Uh, I think they're LC05 or 04 or something like that. And they're the larger windows. So I need 20 of those. And these are the 3D printed windows, which are going to run along the platform. And I need eight of those. And obviously I've got, still got to make two loading bay doors, um, which would be scratch built. So, this is what you get in the way of doors. You get a front face and a back face, and all I do is just super glue them together. Now you have seen me in the past trimming these down but as they're going to be the main station doors I'm going to leave them at uh, the width that they are. Okay so we've moved on a little bit and um, so that's the doors finished. So here we are we have our uh, 11 doors. Uh, two of them are double doors one set for the front, one set for the back, and on all the rest will be doors that will be scattered around the station. Um, as with the Saracen's head, I left the door open so we can have a sneaky peek through. And this will be going into the booking hall. Um, the framework is made with 1.5 square styrene strip. And what I've done is to give this frame a little bit of a strength because this is quite delicate. I've stuck a little bit of strip there. I don't know if you can see it. It's 1.5 by 0.2. It just overlaps this corner joint. It just gives that a little bit of strength because that's going to be very, very delicate to handle until it's fitted into the wall, as you can imagine. So, that's the doors time to make loading bay doors. Now we move on to the loading bay doors. Um, I've got some 0.8 plastic card here and uh, base the doors 26 mil tall by 21 mil wide. Um, I'm loosely going to base the doors on this door here um, with a fixed frame. So these doors are not going to be like South Shields doors where they're on a sliding frame. These are going to be um, in a frame um, rather than the sliding open doors. So what we're going to do, we're going to mark these out so it looks like there's planking on both sides because we'll be able to see both sides. So what I'm doing, I'm just finding the centre, which is roughly 10.5, and then I'll do a really deep score. And then we'll 
flip it over and do the same. do then is we'll use the scalpel again to create all the planking and then on, on this side we shall have the the frames so I'm just scoring the planking like this it's roughly just under a millimeter apart nice steady spacings not being too heavy with the blade, just enough to to score it. Like so. So that's one side and I'll do exactly the same to the other side. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting in the cross members for the door. So I'm just putting a little bit of polyurethane cement on there. And I'm just sitting it down roughly about 2 millimeters from the top and bottom. And we'll just cut that off. And what I'll do then is I'll put another one in the middle, like so, and then we'll put some diagonal braces um, this way and then this way. And hopefully you'll end up with something like that. As you can see, it's a pair of doors. It's upside down. That's how it should look. So, although you've got the strip running across, it's just a case of just gently scoring it there where your strips have gone across. And then that just helps to give the illusion that you've got two doors. And to finish off, I've just added some 1.5mm strip around the doors um, for the frame. If you've noticed, I've this, this slightly longer so I can hold it while I'm painting it. There you go. Loading bay doors are done. Right, so now we start painting the doors. I'm using Gloss 20. It's a crimson red. And it's from Humbrol. And uh, yeah, so just having that little little bit of an edge of a frame there just helps to uh, hold it while you paint, especially these uh, loading bay doors, because I'm painting the actual frame red as well. But uh, the uh, other doors, I'll be painting the frames white. As you can see, the paint has gone into the the cuts as we made with the blade, and it's sort of highlighted the the planking. Yeah, sorry, the door's upside down, but uh, yeah, you can see it's highlighted the planking. Yeah, you see better now that the door's right way up. So you'll see both sides of this door, um, the entrance doors, you'll probably see both sides of them as well. Um, so I'll do both sides of those. 
apply that helps limit the uh, light bleed. Uh, so I've learned my lesson from the South Shield stores when I don't know if you remember when I first did those the light shone through the doors. So this might need a second coat yet yeah, but we'll see. So I've left it a little while so what I'm going to do now I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of mixed ballast around the edges. And as you can see that's falling into the varnish or just sitting on the edge of the varnish. That's it, I think that's enough. That's, that's more than enough I think. Maybe just a little bit more in that corner. That's it. Right, so the next thing is I'm just going to cut some brambles to go up against the wall. And just drop that into the varnish as well. Right on that edge. Here we go, I'll drop that in there as well. So now I'm just adding some more grass to go right on that edge there in that corner. And a little bit in there. Right, so we shall leave that and we'll see what it looks like after the varnish has gone off. So these are the windows that I'm using for the station LC24 from the Smart Models. As you can see they come in three parts and it's just a case of gluing them together to form a window like this. Uh, you get six in a packet so hopefully with this six I'll have enough to do the station. I just want to show you quickly how these window frames together. Uh, I said to you that they come in three parts. So you have the main frame, you have the upper sash and the lower sash. And what I do is I put the glue on the back of the middle sash or the upper sash and then stick it to the lower sash like so and then the frame goes over the upper sash if you like and that gives it a nice step in the window frame as they were originally This is one I've done earlier. The only thing I've done different with this is I've added a little bit of plastic strip along the bottom just to give it a little bit of a sill. It's 3 mil wide and obviously when that gets pushed into the wall it just gives that a little bit extra detail. So by leaving the frame that little bit longer across the top, as you can see I can just get a grip of this door and not worry about uh, touching it so much. And with a steady hand.
you can hold the door and manipulate it while you paint it. Obviously this is the, the back side of the door, or the inside. So I'm just trying to lose the red paint that has overflowed onto the frame. Using the white satin, of course. And we we'll just turn it around and then do the other side. And once the door is dry, we just trim off that little bit and then we can um, fit the doors then but uh, we're a long way off from that yet we still got all the windows to do yet we'll have another look at the loading bay doors and uh, yeah the detail has, has come through with all that scoring which is good uh, what I'll do here is I'll drill a hole and put in a fine scale pin uh, so it looks like there's handles on the outside. Right, so I shall carry on with painting the door frames and uh, catch up with you later. And this is what they look like once they're finished and uh, been added to the building. Mrs. T's sweet shop. So I'm just looking at the entrance to the station and it just shows you how small the station is going to be just by looking at the size of the doors already. Hence why I want to make the building as big as possible by adding uh, a second story. Uh, yeah right so that completes the doors uh, regarding the painting anyway you've still got to add um, some glazing and some doorknobs to them and then that's them um, finished they'll be ready to set into the walls when I get around to doing them so let's go to the countryside and have a look at the pond We've left the gloss varnish overnight, so I think it may be hard enough, but I don't want to touch it yet. I might want to give it another 12 hours. I know it's not that deep, but uh, I think I've got the, f the effect I'm after. It looks quite glossy. It looks like water. And, uh, yeah, kind of finishes that scene off quite nicely. So... I think that's all from me this week. Hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And we'll see you again next week. Bye for now. Bye.